Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi guys. So, some of you guys have uh, mentioned to me about the vlogs, doing them two, three times a week. So I think I'll uh, I'll try that, do vlogs until every day, two, three times a week. So anyway, today is Monday. Today we've got Sheikh Akram Nadiwi coming down, and he's gonna give a talk to the students and the teachers, inshallah. So I'm gonna be with him uh, now, and I'll tell you how it goes, inshallah. The wilderness, enjoying the breeze, enjoying the greenery. dedicated video on how to exactly do mutala of certain books more specifically and uh, then we can have a check of that inshallah. So Sheikh will be speaking about um, uh, the scholars of the Indian subcontinent and we kept it uh, on this topic because it's an easy topic for everyone. So yesterday Sheikh uh, Akram Nadwi came and uh, those of you who don't know who Sheikh Dr. Akram Nadwi is, he's a scholar who resides in Oxford and has um, written a book on uh, the Muhaddithat, those women who were famous for teaching hadith and history. So uh, he's, the book is 50 volumes, yeah, so that tells you about how much research he's done. And he's also a very famous scholar in hadith himself. And he teaches, I think it's once a month in uh, Oxford or in London somewhere. But anyway, Sheikh, uh, we met with him, we sat with him and he gave us a talk and uh, asked us some questions as well. And he's got a very deep understanding of Sahih Bukhari as well. I was telling us about the, his own research uh, regarding the chains of Sahih Bukhari and uh, the difference between Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim and, and uh, how certain scholars have uh, overlooked the, the sheer depth of Sahih Bukhari in Muslim. And uh, so he's writing a, writing a commentary at the moment on Sahih Muslim. So it's uh, interesting, inshallah, we'll see how that goes on. And this is the beauty about meeting different scholars from around the world, and different places, different mindsets, different uh, upbringings, different research. It gives you ability to be able to see what kind of path you want to take as well, and what you can do out there. So this is why, you know, these kind of scholars, you should benefit from them, learn from them. And, you know, no scholar is perfect. Everyone has their... Uh, pros and everyone has their cons so you just benefit you yeah, benefit from wherever you can that's the main thing sometimes in life difficult things happen sometimes you get tested sometimes you go through hardships and you might lose your job you might you know all sorts of things can happen main thing you have to remember is always remember that people before you went through some similar or even worse so persevere have patience <coughs> And Allah make it easy for you, inshallah. Okay, guys, some chocolate. So, when studying the Arabic language, a thought came to my mind that. Sorry, I'll eat later. A thought came to my mind. Um. How much Arabic does a person really need to know to be able to benefit from, you know, the Quran and other things? And personally, I mean, what I've come to the conclusion is you need to know according to how much you want to benefit. So this is a bit of a complicated thing. How, how does that work? So basically, I think... You know, if a person just wants to know like each word and how it all sequences together, you don't need to know too much Arabic grammar for that. Yeah, but if you want to understand the technicalities and go in depth, then you have to learn quite a lot of Arabic. So, for example, 
if it was something like Alhamdulillah, all praise is to Allah. I mean, you don't need to know Arabic grammar to know that. As long as you know, as Alhamdu means all praise, and Li is for, and Allah is the word Allah. So Alhamdulillah, you, you got that. But then there's certain aspects that you need to understand for the depth, in depth. And if you want to go in depth, you can't just go shallow. You have to go full, immerse yourself, and you need to understand a very high degree of Arabic grammar. So that's uh, I thought I'd share that with you guys because. You know, sometimes a person might study Arabic grammar and at the end of it think to themselves, have I really benefited from the Quran as a person who looks at it through English, let's say. Yeah, so you might know what this word means, what that word means, but to go in depth, you need to, you know, fully immerse yourself in that. So I just thought I'd uh, share that with you guys. Anyway, um, like I said, um, if you have any comments, any questions, put them in. And I'll try to answer some more of your questions, inshallah, as well.